Hi, I'm Dave Turpin, the Interim Editor-in-Chief of the AJODO. I'd like to welcome you to the journal and our Case of the Month. In this short video, I will show selected pretreatment records of a case report that was accepted for publication in this month's issue of the journal. After you review the author's treatment options, I want to know, how would you treat this patient? The patient is an eight-year-old female with a chief complaint of an anterior crossbite and dished-in or flat face. Her parents complained that she was negatively affected by her facial appearance. She had a class three malocclusion with an anterior crossbite, a unilateral posterior crossbite, as well as maxillary crowding. The initial cephalometric examination disclosed a retrognathic maxilla as well as a prognathic mandible. The patient had an AMB of negative 3.5 degrees and a width appraisal of negative 6.5 millimeters. So what are your treatment options? Option number one, limited early orthodontic treatment to correct the posterior crossbite followed by orthognathic surgery later when growth is completed. At that time, full fixed appliances will be used to decompensate all teeth until ideally positioned to allow for a surgical resolution of the malocclusion. Growth will be closely monitored with periodic head films to determine when the second phase of treatment could be safely initiated. Option number two, Two-phase orthodontic treatment from the beginning, with the goal being to treat the patient non-surgically. This would require use of a bonded maxillary expansion appliance combined with early maxillary protraction using a face mask. Following expansion, fixed appliances will be placed to increase maxillary arch length in an attempt to create enough space for all remaining permanent teeth to erupt. Fixed appliances on the mandibular arch would eventually be required to increase lingual root torque combined with class 3 elastics to gradually upright those incisors. To summarize, the authors considered two different treatment options to manage the developing class 3 malocclusion. Option 1, minimal early treatment with a long period of follow-up until jaw surgery could be safely completed, keeping in mind the psychological aspects of doing so little until the eruption of all teeth. Option two, undertaking a lengthy plan of two-phase orthodontic treatment, finally resorting to full fixed appliances with good control of root torque and elastic force to allow for a non-surgical approach. Of course, jaw growth would be closely monitored throughout the second phase of treatment. How would you manage this patient's needs? Allow me to give you a sneak preview of the patient two years after appliance removal. To find out how the authors treated this patient, click on the link below to view the AJODO March Case of the Month on our journal website. Thank you.